Last week, I released a video on Bolt and how I used that to create a directory listing website as a kind of test to see how easy it would be to create something like that. One of the comments that kind of came up there was, well, is this database driven? Does this have a back end? Can you add businesses? Can you manage those businesses and so on? At the time of releasing the video, it didn't. But when I uploaded that and sort of scheduled it, I thought I'm going to expand this and see how easy it would be to include things like Superbase in there to handle the database structure, to have an admin section and so on and so forth. Which leads me on to one of the comments that we kind of get is that, Paul, this is a kind of not the nicest looking site in the world. And you're absolutely right. I haven't spent a huge amount of time in asking it to do any kind of design side of things. This is very much the sort of first iteration. And one of the common problems you have with a lot of these kind of AI based design tools is that they use predominantly frameworks are already there. For example, I think Bolt uses Tailwind. So things will very quickly look the same. You'll see if you create a dashboard and admin, they will have very similar kind of look and feel. However, this is a common thing that I think we're seeing right now with AI based tools like this, the low code and no code tools like Bolt, like Lovable and so on. However, I do think these are areas that are being addressed. We've already seen that Bolt recently sent out uh, an update with how you can use a design system to pull in various different aspects of maybe a brand design system that you're using. Sadly, it is locked behind one of those higher tier paywalls. It's not on the lower tier paywall, which is what I'm using. Hopefully that will sort of filter down. We will get advantage of that. But I think these are things that are gonna definitely kind of come out and expand. We're gonna see a lot more creativity being allowed to be able to be used in this and making it easier. As I keep saying, this AI based tool is the worst it's going to be today. In a week, a month, a year, two years, there's going to be massive differences in how we interact with them and what they will be able to achieve. Will they replace a good designer with a good UX sort of UI experience? Will they replace sort of people that understand the journey that users want to go on for the foreseeable future? I don't think so. But in time, it absolutely will do because everything can be learned. Everything can be tested. Everything can be modeled based upon examples that are already out there. Will you lose your job anytime soon? Probably not, unless, of course, you are a lower base designer. Anyway, we digress. We can talk about that in a different video. So let's take a look at what we have here and how I've expanded it. So the front end looks the way it looks. Like I say, there's not a lot of time has been spent on this. However, we go and take a look at one of these entries, which incidentally have been pulled in from a live website. This is actually grabbing that information from online. I covered that in this original video. It kind of shocked me. But the call now works. You can see it's using the telephone number. The get directions will actually take you over to Google Maps with directions from your current location to this business address. I haven't prompted it to do any of that. It's automatically done it itself, which I think is pretty cool. But that's all the front end. We've kind of seen the front end. You want to add a new business, you can add a new business inside here, and all this data is available. We can lock this behind a login screen, which I've done in the past, but any entry is going to be sort of set to a draft status and will have to be approved before anything can be done. We can make sure that we sanitize any information. You just have to prompt it the right way to handle these things. So then we've got the admin side of things, and this is locked away between a login section. So we can't access this without logging in. So let's go and log in. And once we're logged in, we're now into our dashboard. So if you've seen any other sort of Bolt AI kind of dashboards that have been created, you'll see a very similar look. You'll have these sort of cards across the top. And like I say, from a functional point of view, it does what it needs to do. And most people don't really care what this specifically looks like. As long as it has all the functions, it looks neat and tidy and it operates the way that you want it to. It's a function over form thing. But like I say, I think we are going to get more control over customizing these as these tools expand and open up their possibility to a design point of view and not just a code point of view. But we've got things broken down into things to do and businesses, which basically echoes what I have here, our businesses and our things to do. You can see there we have all the businesses. If someone adds a new business in, this is one that I've added in myself. You can see this pulls in the relevant data. This is set to publish, but we can set this to be draft or rejected, and that will display or not display on the front end. We can easily preview what this looks like. So there's all the data. We can edit the data here. So everything that you've seen on that original form is available here to you as well. So you can customize this, change the category, phone number, details, and so on. So all that data is available. So we've got a fully controlled 
dashboard. If you want to jump into things to do, it works in fundamentally the same way. You can see it updates the stats across the top. We've got filters that allow us to filter based upon different criteria, whether they're featured, for example, whether they're published, unpublished, you kind of get the idea, all of them. We can see then we've got simple preview image. We've got the name, information underneath, the category it's in, whether it's published and featured, the date it was created. We can preview this. Again, all this data has been pulled in for me. We can see we can edit this if we want to. And again, we've got the same kind of controls we had with the business. We can add tags in, all those kinds of good things and save those changes. So all of this has been done. This is connected up to a super based database. So this is now a fully database controlled website with an admin setup. And if we jump back into Bolt, Let's take a quick look at the number of tokens I've got remaining. I started this project with about 20 million tokens. Now, don't ask me how the hell these tokens work because I have no idea how many tokens are used for various different things. But through the use of prompting and so on, you can see I've used about a quarter of my monthly allowance, which cost me about $20, so about $5 to get the website to this point. Are there things that you could do to make it better? Absolutely. Are there areas that could be improved upon how we work in a tool like Bolt AI? Again, absolutely. Is this a fully functioning website? Yes. Can you update it? Yes. Can you manage and maintain the content? Yes. So now I've seen the dashboard, the back end, and all those kinds of things. Let's talk about one of the biggest comments that I get when we talk about tools like Bolt, Lovable, and so on, is updates and security. Now, security, let's not underplay security here. Security is a vitally important thing. And if you're storing user data, identifiable data, where you need to be cognizant of things like GDPR and the different kind of laws we have around the world, then you need to understand what the heck is going on here. You need to know what the code is doing. You need to be able to do security audits to make sure that everything is secure. Would you be using a tool like this for something like that? Maybe, maybe not. That's a discussion for a different day, I think. However, when we talk about the update side of things, I think Based upon my user base and my typical viewership, which is WordPress centric people, we have a mentality of update mentality. It's something that whenever you start to work with WordPress, you soon realize there's updates constantly for core, for WordPress themes, for plugins. There's potentials for problems where one plugin doesn't talk well to another, your site crashes, goes offline, and have all manner of different issues. If you come from a background prior to using WordPress, where maybe you've used tools like Dreamweaver or you've coded by hand and different things like that, it's a different mentality because it's a different kind of setup. You don't have the constant update cycles that we have with a tool like WordPress. And therefore, when you look at something like you know, Bolt, Lovable, and these kinds of low-code, no-code tools, and as we see these expand and get better, I think the potential for the update things is less of an issue than it is with WordPress. Plus, as long as you're still using a tool like Bolt, for example, if you built the site in Bolt, well, you can deal with updates and changes and things like that, things that maybe break because there's been a, a PHP or you know whatever kind of update, Superbase, whatever you're using. But I think, again, once these become more self-contained, like for example, Lovable now as moving away from Superbase and has its own database structure, when they become more self-contained tools, like it or loathe it, it's up to you which way you want to go, the potential to have breaking issues becomes less because they know how to work with the tools that are part of the overall same platform. So as we see tools like Bolt develop and get replaced by sort of second generation, third generation AI tools, we're going to see that becoming less of an issue. Is it going to be wiped out? Well, time will tell if that's going to be something that gets wiped out completely. But that's my kind of thoughts on it, where we are today and where we're going to see it in the near future. But I would love to get your feedback on this topic. Have you used tools like Bolt, Lovable, Replit, and all those kinds of things? What are your thoughts? Have you found it good, bad, indifferent? Are you bothered by this? Are you scared or worried? Let me have your comments down below in the comments section. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.